Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us today. You know, this month being November is Epilepsy Awareness Month. Our guest in studio is Dr. Ahmed Abdelmoiti, Director of Children's Mercy Hospital's Level 4 Epilepsy Center, and he's with us today to discuss some of the truths, myths, and maybe dispel some of the myths about epilepsy. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Doctor. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, for our listeners who may not be uh, familiar with exactly what epilepsy is, what is epilepsy? So epilepsy is a neurological condition, um, which is the tendency of a person or of a patient to have um, more than one unprovoked seizure. So um, a lot of times we'll get the question in the clinic, um, do I have epilepsy or do I have seizure? And um, when the patient is having an event, and that can be different types, um, that's, that's a seizure. Whenever there's an increased electrical activity um, on the brain, and uh, that leads to changes in the neurological status, that's a seizure. But the tendency to have more than one of this event, that's the definition of epilepsy. The epilepsy is the seizure. Are there different causes of seizures that determine uh, what type of epilepsy? Absolutely. So um, there are two main broad types of epilepsy. Uh, the focal epilepsy, um, in which the seizures are coming out of one focus or one part of the brain. And the seizures typically will look different than the generalized epilepsy, which is the second type of epilepsy. So uh, in the first type with focal epilepsy, um, patients are having partial seizures, uh, which means seizures are all coming out of one part. And depending on what part of the brain that is, um, if it's, for example, coming out of the part of the brain that's responsible for movement, uh, then the first symptom or the first sign of the seizure will be movement or rhythmic shaking of that part of the body. If it's coming where um, smell is the center um, in that brain, so the patient will start feeling or start sensing um, uh, smelling different smells, uh, like burned rubber, for example. If it's coming out of taste, um, it would be tasting something. So um, seizures are not all the same. So in partial seizures, depending on where the seizure is coming from, um, the symptom or the top of seizure will be will be very different. In generalized epilepsy, it's um, it's this is when the seizure is coming from all over the the um, the, the cortex or the shell of the brain, mm -hmm. and there are different types of them. Um, some are called the tonic clonic seizures uh, when the body is shaking, which is the most common uh, commonly known type by by people, not necessarily the most common type of. of seizure, but most commonly known. And then there's Epsilon seizure when um, there is um, uh, lack of response, uh, arrested behavior. The patient might have some automatism with like lip smacking or um, eye fluttering and uh, eyelid um, uh, opening and closing. Um, there's some other types which are quick, brief jerk of um, uh, upper or lower extremities, and this is called myoclonic seizures, where it, it involves um, both sides of the body in a very brief lightning-like um, speed um, type, of, type of twitch. Mm -hmm. Then there's the clonic type, which again, there, there's the moving um, seizures without necessarily stiffening or without posture, um, uh, retaining a posture in a, in a, in a certain um, in a certain position. Um, there are the atonic seizures uh, when the patient might lose tone all of a sudden and um, and drop down to the floor if they're standing up or drop down on the on the dinner table if they're eating um, because they are, all of a sudden automatically will lose uh, will lose tone of their of their body so depending on the seizure type um, its distribution if it's happening on both sides of the body or if it's happening only on one side of the body uh, that will decide if it's a focal epilepsy or if it's a generalized epilepsy and again depending on its nature um, and the duration of a seizure it will also be um, a, a different type of seizure depending on um, on the way it looks who is a candidate for any or all of these types of epilepsy seizures? So um, there are a lot of reasons why seizures can happen. We understand and we know some of it, but there are others that we don't understand. So um, we kind of, in a way, um, say that pretty much any brain, um, when, when triggered enough, either by an underlying genetic condition, by metabolic causes, sometimes by structural causes, like after a, after a severe head trauma, after a... Um, a stroke, after um, uh, lack of oxygen or lack of blood supply to the brain. And a lot of times, without a, without a clear known reason, um, any of that can, can predispose patients to epilepsy. So sometimes it, the, the, the cause is obvious and clear in the history, but other times the cause is completely um, ununderstand, un, 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 uncomprehensible, and we cannot really put our hands on what's causing uh, the seizure. So, so who can have seizures? Pretty much anybody with a brain um, is at some chance or some risk to have seizures. That risk changes a lot depending on those other predisposing factors from genetics, from metabolic, from uh, uh, structural, and so forth. 
but frequency is the the main tell. Is that correct? So the frequency of seizures can vary a lot depending on the on again either the underlying cause and also the epilepsy syndrome. So um, epilepsy, as we agreed by definition, is tendency to have more than one unprovoked seizure. So it can be um, uh, one a year or it can be hundred a day, uh-huh. um, depending on the underlying cause. Uh, there are certain known genetic types of epilepsy where patients are typically uh, expected to have up, upwards of 100 seizures per day, while other types, um, they usually are pretty well controlled with the first seizure medication where patients might have maybe one a year or at some other times. Once the medication is started, patients continue to do well and uh, the decisions are made later when and if to stop seizure medicines. In your experience, have you noticed one type uh, of um, age group or, or something that is more um, likely or demonstrates uh, more seizures? Yeah, that's a really good question. So statistics have, have taught us that uh, there are two peaks uh, for the incidence of epilepsy or new cases to, to get added to the epilepsy pool. Um, that The first peak in the first two years of life, um, for the reasons related mostly to genetic, metabolic, um, and birth trauma. And so in the first two years of life, new cases of seizures or new cases of epilepsy that are added to the epilepsy pool, um, that's a peak. The other peak or the second peak doesn't come until way later in the 70s um, when patients are 70 plus years of age for other set of reasons. And this is when um, strokes are more prevalent, uh, falling with head trauma are more prevalent um, in some patients who are, might be immune compromised or their immunity is not as good uh, with certain infections. Uh, tumors um, are going to be more prevalent in, in older patient populations. So um, new cases of epilepsy tend to happen uh, more likely in the first two years of life than later on in the geriatric age group in the 70s plus. Um, that doesn't mean that it cannot happen in between, but the, the tendency or the risk to add new cases of epilepsy in between tends to be lower than those two extremes of age. You are the director of uh, Children's Mercy Hospital Level 4 Epilepsy Center. Uh, could you explain to me, is there um, a reason that there is an Epilepsy 4, a Level 4 center? Or is there a Level 1, 2, and 3? Yeah, so the International League Against Epilepsy um, then after, uh, put, puts the definitions for um, for epilepsy and the definitions for the different ideologies and the different causes. Um, then the National Association for Epilepsy Center um, uh, was formed to try to kind of put some guidelines and, and parameters for um, for what different centers in different places can do, which kind of helps patients um, and also pr- healthcare providers to decide when do, when do I need to move my patient to the next level. So a level four um, is the highest there is in, in epilepsy centers, and um, that is a center that's capable of, of doing all different modalities of treatment for epilepsy, from pharmacological treatment um, with medications um, for patients who are starting on the very first um, uh, uh, treatment, uh, first medication, um, on to patients who have refractory epilepsy, which is drug-resistant epilepsy, those who fail to respond to two or more seizure medications and continue to have more than one seizure per year, um, in whom there are either more medication treatment, uh, there is diet treatment with a ketogenic diet or a ketogenic diet-like treatment um, uh, through diet. Uh, there's epilepsy surgery, uh, where in some types of um, epilepsy, surgery resection um, of, of the focus where the seizure is coming from um, can be a cure for that, that patient with epilepsy. Then there's the neuromodulation, um, which is um, electrical stimulation uh, done through different modalities, uh, either directly in the brain or through different nerves, uh, like the vagus nerve, um, to help um, alleviate a lot of the seizures, help improve quality of life, and overall get um, get better uh, uh, better patients' care. So uh, a level four epilepsy center is a center who, who meets enough standards or meets high enough standards of enough numbers of epilepsy resection cases, um, has the experience with neuromodulation, uh, the diet. So in other terms, it's a holistic approach, not just for um, a the theater, but for the whole 360 of the patient as far as their well-being, their psychology, and, and other comorbidities that can happen with epilepsy. It's been great having you here with us today, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Dr. Ahmed Abdelmoiti, Director of Children's Mercy Hospital's Level 4 Epilepsy Center, in studio today with us discussing some of the misconceptions about epilepsy and some of the many types of epilepsy that do exist. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.